What's up guys? My name is Brendan and today I want to show you 10 tricking flips. You see, the sport of tricking is incredibly diverse and incorporates skills like flips from many different disciplines like capoeira, gymnastics, wushu, and so many others. Today I'll be showing you guys some of my favorite flips from the sport of tricking. So with that said, let's get started. Our first flip is the corkscrew, or cork for short. You see, this trick comes from capoeira, and it is one of the most popular skills in tricking. People will do corks, double corks, and a ton of cork variations. This trick is super hard to perform as well. To do a cork, you're executing a backflip with a 360 spin all off one leg, initiating your flipping momentum by swinging your body. The cork is an incredibly difficult skill, but it is one of the most popular flips in tricking. Our second flip is the aerial. The aerial is a trick from gymnastics, but when a tricker performs it, they do it slightly different. When a gymnast performs an aerial, they do it right over their head, doing a completely inverted flip. But when a tricking athlete does an aerial, they tend to do it more off axis and their hips don't go directly over their head. So the aerial in the sport of tricking is almost like a pseudo flip. You're not going hips over head, rather you're just going over the ground slightly off axis. What I would recommend if you're first learning your aerial is start with a cartwheel and then slowly but surely remove the weight of your hands until you're able to do the tricker style aerial. Flip number three is the Webster. The Webster is a trick that is very commonly seen in free running and parkour. The Webster is just a front flip where you get your flipping momentum from a front swing leg. Your leg starts in front of you and then it kicks behind you, generating the flipping momentum that you need. Then you jump off your base foot and tuck your body in to execute a front flip. Once you get your flipping rotation, you just open up and land like normal. The Webster is a really fun trick and it's pretty low risk. So I would recommend if you're first learning tricking, use the Webster as one of your first fundamental flips. Flip number four is the cheat gainer. The cheat gainer is one of the most common skills in tricking and it is super fundamental for learning the advanced skills like the cork that I showed you earlier. A cheat gainer is a backflip where you get most of your flipping momentum from a backswing, taking your leg from behind you and getting your arms behind you and throwing them in front to give you your backwards flipping momentum. If you get a good cheat gainer, you will be able to progress to the cork far faster because the cheat gainer is the set for the cork. The reason it's called a cheat gainer is because you're not going completely inverted. Your tricking gainer will have the same level of inversion as your tricking aerial. So not completely overhead, but rather slightly to the side. And that is the cheat gainer. It's a super fun flip and super important for progressing to some of the cooler skills of tricking, like the cork. Our fifth flip is the Takuraba. The Takuraba is one of the weirdest flips in tricking. To do this skill, you use a cheat setup, the same setup you would use for a tornado kick, but then once you leave the ground, you execute a front flip. It is an incredibly awkward skill that looks really cool when done well. That said, the Takuraba is a really hard trick and I would not recommend it for any athletes who are starting tricking. Only people who understand the sport, who have a good tornado kick and probably a solid Webster. This trick is really hard, really cool, and honestly, really weird. So if you can learn the Takuraba, credit to you. Flip number six is the butterfly kick. The butterfly kick comes from Wushu and it is one of the most fundamental skills in tricking. That said, I'm not sure if the butterfly kick counts as a flip. 
Your hips don't go over your head and you stay flat to the ground the entire time. But often when I do a butterfly kick, people will say that it was a good flip. So guys, leave me a comment down below. Does the butterfly kick count as a flip? Personally, I think it does, but everybody has their own opinion. Flip number seven is the rise. And this is another trick from Capoeira. To do a rise, you do that front swing that we did earlier for the Webster, but then you turn your body and look at the ground the entire time to do a super off axis flip. The rise is a really weird trick to understand because it comes from the Gumby. If you can do a good Gumby on the ground, using your arms for support, you can then remove them slowly but surely to make it into a flip. You can do your Gumby, then take away one hand to do the Sailor Moon, and then take away the front hand and replace it with the back hand to learn the touchdown rise. And then you can slowly remove your arms, just like you did from the cartwheel to the aerial, to learn the Gumby and then the rise. This trick is also one of the most common setups in tricking. If you can get a solid rise, then you can just throw a hand down, use the touchdown rise, and gain access to the most powerful setup in tricking, in my opinion. The rise is a super cool trick, and I think every athlete should learn it. Flip number eight is the backflip. To this day, I still have people asking me if I can do a backflip, and the answer is yes. If you want to learn the sport of tricking, you should learn your very fundamental flips. And that includes the backflip, where you literally just stand regular, jump up, and tuck your body to rotate backwards. If you can learn the backflip, you can then learn backflip variations, like the flash kick, which looks way more impressive. Honestly, the backflip isn't a super important skill for most tricking athletes, but I strongly recommend everyone learn it. It helps you condition your legs, get more aerial awareness, and once you learn the backflip, you can progress it to higher level tricks like the flash kick I mentioned earlier, or the standing full. Having a good backflip is not super important for tricking, but it will definitely help. Flip number nine is the cart full. Athletes will use their cartwheel to set them up for a full twist, but it's not really a full. When a tricker does their cartwheel, they often end in a neutral stance. And if you jump from a neutral stance, do a full and land in a backside stance, like you would for the cart full, you're not actually turning 360 degrees, you're turning 270 degrees. But because the cartwheel is a little bit off axis, you end up doing an off axis full, which works really well for the sport of tricking. But keep in mind, this is not a cart full like you would see maybe in gymnastics. The technique is slightly different. People use a more off axis cartwheel and they don't actually rotate 360 degrees when they perform this trick. Flip number 10 is the shant. And I definitely am not sure if this one is a flip. To do a shant, you do a backflip, but you don't flip with half of your body. Half of your body stays on the ground, almost completely inverted, while the other half of your body does an off axis flipping motion. This is a really weird trick. If you wanna learn the shant, I made a tutorial for it a little while ago, but this trick is super easy. If you wanna do the shant, you literally just stand, squat, and jump, kicking one leg over your body. Doing a little baby jump, maybe only going an inch in the air. The shant is a super fun trick, but honestly, I'm not sure if it counts as a flip. Leave me a comment down below, guys. Does the butterfly kick count as a flip? Does the shant count as a flip? Does the off axis aerial or the rise count as flips? I'm not exactly sure. Tricking is so weird and so diverse that it's often hard to put tricks in these little boxes like kick, flip, or twist, because often these tricks involve all three elements.
I wanted to make this video to showcase how diverse the flips in tricking are. And often they are pseudo flips. You're not going directly hips over head. You're going maybe at an axis or something strange or maybe even setting up from a completely inverted takeoff like the Takuraba. These tricks are super weird. And guys, if you think any of the tricks I mentioned are not flips, that's totally fine. Leave it in the comments down below. Let's have an educated discussion. Because what defines a flip is really weird and often people don't understand it. Because the skills and tricking combine kicks, flips, and twists. Thank you guys so much for watching and a special thank you to all the patrons of Mastering Tricking. If you guys didn't know, this series is funded in part by you guys, trickers in the community who have a little bit of extra money to spare who want to invest it in educational tricking content. Guys, if you become a patron, you get instant access to me along with a ton of other rewards like discount codes or access to the Mastering Curriculum. Guys, thank you again for supporting this channel, watching the videos, and helping share them. Just a heads up, I will not be uploading on Thursday or Friday this week because of Thanksgiving and the holiday. I want to spend a little bit of time focusing on my family. But thank you guys again for watching and being awesome. Please have a lovely day and a great Thanksgiving.